Hey hello everyone this is Rohinath and welcome to another video so welcome to the second part of this coding series uh, first of all sorry that <laughs> it took so long to upload the second part of this video but uh, many things are actually happening so I couldn't able to like uh, shoot and edit the video as few days back I joined my new organization new company uh, so anyways uh, my laptop was also uh, damaged so I couldn't able to do anything so anyways everything is now set it up uh, so video will be now much frequent so anyways let's jump into the video okay so uh, let's jump into this okay uh, we have three uh, three questions uh, so one is like convert a C++ variable into a Java variable means I can uh, explaining this one that if you have like in the C++ what we what we actually have if we use a variable then we are using this kind of a variable this is a variable okay now but in Java what we actually use we mainly use camel case so this is a variable so this is the this is the question where you are given this type of string and you need to do in this type of screen means uh, this type of string so this is the question so let's jump into this I have already written the code so uh, this is the main method where we are passing uh, this is a variable in this format is the C++ format and I have actually uh, written one method that is the convert convert yeah convert spelling mistake that is fine uh, convert convert variable where you are given means you are getting one input parameters and then what we are actually doing we are uh, taking that into a character array okay input dot to char array then I have actually introduced one extra variable that is the final output which is now a blank string now what I am actually doing now int i equal to 0 i less than c dot length that is the array dot length then i plus plus and we are checking that if that is the underscore or not okay if not underscore then we are just simply uh, concatting the character and making as a string variable and concatting into the final output otherwise we are just taking the next character and we are doing that to uppercase okay means if this comes then we are taking the next character if this comes then we are taking i and making this dot to uppercase which will done the job so if I run this you can see I am sending this is a variable in this format but uh, the output is this is a variable in the camel case now this is not completely 100% uh, proof code because uh, this code this code I uh, wrote at the time of interview at that time I was not checked for the validations and all means if something like that if you have something like this okay then what it will actually do it will actually return you one null pointer because I am directly checking that i plus one but it is the last last character of of this so in that case you what we have to do you just uh, take a substring if you have like uh, at the beginning or at the end if you have underscore then you can actually take the substring of that middle one you can omit those beginning and the end end uh, end character and take the rest of the thing and if you have like more sort of uh, like uh, what I can say symbols and all or characters then you can definitely omit that also but in interview they are just checking that you have the knowledge or not and they actually approve that uh, approve this code also so this is the thing if you have time you can actually check for 
some more validations also so the next question is short an array without using any predefined functions okay so this is the thing that you are given one array uh, array of integer then you need to sort that but without choosing any like predefined function like natural order or sort or let's say reverse order those type of things you uh, cannot use this is the code uh, where i have took one array let's say 2 1 67 34 80 956 like that and i have uh, taken one temporary variable which i have initialized with zero and using two for loop i was doing the job means what i was checking that int i equal to zero air dot length i is less than air dot length and j equals to i and j less than air dot length then we are just checking that if a r r i is the first one is greater than the second one or not if that is then we are just swapping that with the third variable means we are uh, in the temp we are just initializing that error i then in error i we are just initializing error j that is the next one uh, as it is actually going g plus plus and then error j equals to 10 and then we are just printing all the values let's print this okay now you can see it is sorted the array is sorted now 1 2 34 56 67 89 and 100 so this is the ascending order you can uh, do it in the descending order as well just uh, do this means if error i is less than error j then you can find it uh, means you can actually print this in a descending order format so this is the thing that 189 67 56 34 2 and 1 so these are all the all the codes what i have written at the time of the interview let's try it for the third one third one is the train platform count so it was a bit tricky so it took me around like 15 to 20 minutes uh okay so uh so let's clear you with the problem statement what you actually do let's keep this aside right now let's focus on this two line one is the arrival time and one is the departure time so the arrival time is something like that 900 9.00 you can actually mention that as 9 am so i'm telling you like that only that 9 am is the arrival time 9 20 9 30 9 40 10 10 uh, 10 30 and departure time is something like 9 10 9 30 uh, 9 50 10 20 10 20 10 40 so this is the departure time so the problem statement is that how many platform will actually need to acquire those trains where no train have to wait for one to another we are just sorting everything the arrival time we are sorting the with comparator dot natural order to one and we are initializing in platform equal to one and occupancy is one so uh, what we are checking let's say it's int i equal to zero and i less than arrival time dot size minus one as this is the list it comes it starts with zero and ends with size minus one so i plus plus and and the next for loop is j equal to i plus one and it's going j equal to i plus one only means only one at a time we'll actually check after that the arrival time will check means that is the that is the thing that is why the for loop actually runs only once with these values okay let's understand the problem in a better way okay let's say one train arrives at nine we have already uh, sorted this so you can definitely check that out uh, so one train comes at nine and departs at nine ten then another train comes at 9.20 and departs at 9.30. So, if that first train goes, means departs at 9.10 and second train comes at 9.20, in that case, we don't require one more platform. We can definitely use the same platform to entering, uh, means, uh, for, for the arriving of the second train. Okay, so you don't need to add one platform here. 
but in the third scenario where the arrival time is 9.30 and departure time is also 9.30 for the, for the second train. So in that case you need one more platform because uh, it's actually the same. One train is almost almost passing then only we can actually uh, have that place for the another one. So we are increasing one platform when the arrival time and the departure time is equal. Okay. And also like the same means 940 in that way we will actually uh, do our job. So let's take the code for an example. So anyways, uh, so first of all, we are checking that uh, the departure time is greater than or equal to. So first one is like this. The departure time is 910 and the arrival time is 920. So departure time is not greater than the arrival time it will actually not go into this loop and departure time not equals also it will not go into this also so so the platform will not increase now for the this scenario that 930 and 930 so what it actually checks that it's equal as it is equal we are actually increasing one platform occupancy is still one because one train moves out and one train comes in even though we are actually uh, increasing one platform but one train already moves out that is why occupancy is still one we have one left and the platform count is now two and then again comes at the 940 and the 950 where the departure time is greater than the arrival time so we are again increasing one platform but in that case what we are mainly increasing we are checking that OCC OCC means the occupancy occupancy is equal to the platform or not now the occupancy is one but the platform is two now we have one occupancy left so in that case we are just increasing one occupancy but we are not increasing one platform so in that way uh, I have written the code and I am again telling you this is not the proper code. You can definitely try by yourself and make it a more valuable uh, valuable code if you want. But that was the that was the time that was the interview time what uh, came in my mind. I just uh, written this code and I am sharing this only because uh you don't i want to i want to share you the experience of that you don't need to have all the validations again i'm actually repeating it the third time so you don't need to have all the validation they are going to see uh that what approach you are going to follow and what is the uh, means how you are actually reacting with the code and how you are processing with the code so that is the thing they are actually uh, means they are actually looking for so that is why I am actually sharing this piece of code what I actually written at the time of the interview. Okay. So anyways, uh, if you um, if you correct this one also, please share the code uh, with everyone in the comment section. You can definitely share your git link in the comment section also. Uh, that will actually definitely help others and also help me uh, in every way. So that is the thing and this is the second part of the video and uh, I'll come up with the third and the fourth part. Fourth will be the last one. 